Today we're going to dive into more Japanese horror. This is a video where we'll be looking at the story for Nayuta Studios' Hollow Cocoon. Hollow Cocoon is a first-person horror game which is set in 1980s Japan. This is a game that came out in October, but with my huge backlog of videos that I'm working on, this one initially slipped under the radar for me. That said, I did really enjoy playing this game and diving into the mystery of what the story was all about. Now before we dive in, I need to state the obvious, so please be aware that there will be spoilers in this video for Hollow Cocoon. With all that being said, let's get into the video. It's sometime in the 1980s and college student Minato Jinba receives a phone call. It's his father, Eiji. His grandmother on his mother's side, Kino Miyama, has been admitted to hospital as her health has worsened and she collapsed. Minato's father tells him that they'll visit her in the morning. He doesn't want to go, he doesn't think highly of his grandmother after she declined to attend Minato's mother's funeral. His father also cut ties with her, but he says that they're still family. So the following day they meet at the hospital. The doctor meets them and tells them that she's still in a coma. They're unable to do full testing on her there, so they'll be transferring her to a larger hospital. Minato's father tells him to go to his grandmother's house and get some rest there, and he'll pick him up later on. So Minato hops on the bus and rides there. The village itself, called Ichinos, is completely deserted. It seems that people have also gone missing from the area too. Minato passes the small cemetery and visits his family's memorial. He says a prayer but turns around and sees something in the distance. Minato eventually arrives at the house. A letter sits in the mailbox. It seems that Kinu had received an eviction notice. Not through anything that she had done, but this is because a dam is being built in the village and all of the residents have already accepted the project is happening and have all left their homes. Kinu, being stubborn, didn't want to abandon the house she'd lived in for decades and refused to leave. So, until she was out, work on the dam had ceased. Minato uses the key to the house and enters. He lights some incense and says a prayer for his grandfather Saichi, who died after he fell down a well. Minato looks round the house and he finds a letter that he wrote to his grandfather as a child. In it, he asks if he could buy him a bug collection kit, as his mother will not buy him one. Judging from the letter, he had a close relationship with his grandfather, but he reveals that he'd never even met his grandmother. Not once. He asked his grandfather to write back. Above the desk was a picture that a young Minato drew for his grandfather. It turns out that Minato's grandfather did write back. In the letter, he says that he won't buy him a bug collection kit. He used to collect butterflies, and that was until someone told him to stop catching them. Instead, Saichi offers to take Minato to a place where there are plenty of butterflies and dragonflies. Obviously, that trip never came, as for some reason the letter was never sent, and Saichi died shortly after writing it. Heading outside, Miyama notices lots of the chickens have been killed. What's more, according to Kinu's schedule, burning dead chickens was something that she did daily. Back in the house, Minato also finds a letter from his mother Yuri to her father, Minato's grandfather. She is sharing some news about Minato and how he's getting on at school. She says she feels a little bit better after drinking water and mentions her situation. The fact that she's keeping it from Minato's father, her husband, as she's worried about what'll happen if he finds out. She asks about her mother that Minato is desperate to see his grandmother. She wonders why Kinu dislikes her so much. Minato also finds a strange red talisman in a cupboard, which glows as he approaches it. Ready to get some rest, Minato settles down and goes to sleep. He suffers a nightmare of many different things. The missing people, silkworms, the distant Tory gate along with a strange figure, a picture of a young woman, his grandfather and the well, a weeping woman, and of a conversation with his grandmother regarding the silkworms. これはお解雇様だよ。お解雇様はね、それは大事に大事に育てる。温かい部屋でお腹いっぱい食わの葉を食べさせてあげるのよ。そうして綺麗な眉を作ったら、茹でて殺して糸を取る。かわいそうだと
<laughs> Minato wakes up gasping for air. Walking through the house, he hears something at the front door. So, he goes to investigate. Outside, he finds the head of a chicken. The phone rings and it's his father. He says that he's got delayed and that he won't make it back there that evening. He's at the hospital and it turns out that it seems that Kina didn't just collapse, but she was attacked. She had strangulation marks around her neck. With no choice but to stay the whole night, Minato is extremely thirsty and needs a drink of water. So he heads to the kitchen. With the lights out, Minato has to find a flashlight. He finds one and gets to the phone. He tries to call the police, but is grabbed from behind. Running from the entity, Minato finds a fire poker behind the chicken shed. Inside the house, whilst avoiding the entity, he uses the hook on a basin to retrieve a key. He uses the key to unlock a drawer, and this gives him a pencil which he uses to reveal a code on a notepad by the telephone. This code unlocks a padlock door in the house. Now in relative safety, Minato finds a letter on the table. It appears that after having a consultation and an x-ray, Kinu has a brain tumour. This would explain all of the painkillers around the house. Minato also finds his grandfather's response to the letter his mother sent him. He told her that when she's thirsty to try to hold it, that the burden is not her fault, that Eiji will accept her for who she is. He mentions that Kinu never leaves the house under any circumstance. Headed outside, Minato walks up the garden path and discovers a storage shed. Inside, a letter from Eiji to Kinu. It mentions that at the point that Minato was 13 years old, he had started to become unusually thirsty. Like, all the time. The doctor found nothing wrong, but he likened it to what he'd observed in his wife, that she was thirsty all the time as well. Minato now realises that the thirst he and his mother shared was genetic. He thinks his grandfather may have had it too. After encountering the entity again, Minato discovers a hatch inside the storage shed, behind which is a long tunnel. There is a prison cell in the tunnel too. In a room up some stairs, Minato finds a book on silkworms. It explains that the Miyama family's livelihood revolves around the sale of silkworm eggs. The silk produced by the silkworms was remarkable, earning it the name Thread of the Heavens. There's also a local legend that Miyama silkworms originated from the body of Princess Mayu. As a result, the Miyama family crest is a female silkworm moth. Moving further into the tunnel, Minyanto finds a hidden door, and on the other side, he finds a photograph of a young woman who looks exactly like his mother. Only her name is Ayano, and she died in 1930. Minyanto moves further down the corridor and comes to another area, which looks like it was once inhabited. He sees a silhouette on the other side of the door, so he realises that he needs to be very careful. He finds a family tree for his family and sees that the woman in the picture, Ayano, is his grandmother's older sister his great aunt. He finds a map for what is titled the Miyama Mansion. He also finds some flint, which may prove useful. Confused, and understandably so, Minato pushes forward and then he gets a surprise, and the entity smashes the door down, so he needs to hide. After evading the entity, Minato finds an old letter that his mother wrote to Kinu. It was written several months after the death of Saichi. Turns out that Kinu didn't even invite the family to the funeral. She says that she was going to go there on the 21st of September in order to speak with her. Minato notes that this was the day of his mother's death. In the courtyard, Minato finds that a large door is blocking his ability to escape. He needs two keys, and he spots one inside a well. 
Minato explores the mansion for a way out and finds many doors that require their own particular keys. Behind these doors are items he can use to aid him in his escape by helping him find the two keys. Whilst searching the mansion, Minato sees the entity behind a door and it is saying Kinu's name over and over again. He uses some firewood and the flint to melt some grease in a pan and retrieves a key with a crowbar on it. Using the crowbar key, Minato finds a crowbar, or what I would call pliers, and uses them to remove some floorboards. He has to hide once again as the entity is on the loose. Once safe, Minato finds another key for another door and uses it to gain access to another courtyard. He also finds a spade and a well bucket. A document tells Minato where two crests are buried so he uses the spade and finds the blue mulberry crest and he also finds a stepladder and uses that to reach a shrine and grabs the red mulberry crest. He finds a large plate which when filled with clean water reveals a pattern. Using the two mulberry crests Minato solves a puzzle and retrieves the key to the library. Inside he finds one of the keys for the main door. He uses the well bucket on the well and obtains the second key and uses them both on the door. He passes through into another area of the mansion, the outhouse. Now this is where Kinu and Ayano's rooms were. Minato finds a mirror on the ground in a courtyard which belonged to Kinu. A trick box is revealed in a dresser and Minato uses it with a puzzle to obtain a key. Using the key on a red chest it contains another mirror and using this mirror on Ayano's dresser, Ayano's journal is inside. It says that Kinu looks sad and resentful. Ayano hated seeing Kinu sad, all she wants is for her to be happy. Reacting to being referred to as like a butterfly, Ayano says that she's more like a silkworm, constantly warm and being cared for, that she clings to life but as long as Kino is by her side, she's content. She realises that her marriage to Saichi is coming up, but she cherishes the time she has left with her sister. She says that if it were up to her, she'd stay by her sister's side forever. So what on earth is going on? Before we get into the endings, let's dive into some of the documents in the game, as these provide a lot of backstory. Throughout his time in the Miyama mansion, Minato can find a number of journals scattered about that detail the earlier lives of his grandfather Saichi, his grandmother Kinu, and the young woman from the picture he found, Ayano. In a journal by his grandfather, it reads that Ayano had caught the eye of Saichi, like he was really captivated by her beauty. It delighted him that he had been accepted to marry Ayano the following spring. He showed her his collection of butterflies and it's revealed that she was the reason he stopped collecting them as she didn't like it. It got complicated, seeing as Kinu, Ayano's older sister, liked Sachi. One day Saichi gave Kinu a pearl hairpin and she got really excited and nervous and thought that Saichi liked her. But then he said to her that Ayano was like a butterfly. She was furious. Kinu then began to develop a hatred towards her sister. One day, whilst at the Miyama mansion, Saichi noticed Ayano and Kinu walking together. Ayano was very happy, but when she noticed Saichi, her expression changed. Had Kinu been poisoning her sister's mind in regard to Saichi? He considered the possibility that maybe Ayano is just not that into him. Kinu's depraved motives are revealed through her diary when she openly states that she started being intentionally mean to Ayano, purely for the fact that she is the one who loves Saichi. Ayano never asks why her sister is being mean to her, she just gets sad and apologises. And one month later, Kinu takes Ayano up to the mountains. She writes that next spring her sister will marry Saichi and she will be married off to someone else. She then screams at Ayano and walks away, leaving her sister there on the mountain. So after being left on the mountain, Ayano never returned home. Kinu is guilty, that her shallow jealousy resulted in her abandoning and potentially condemning her sister to die. But then, nearly a month later, Ayano returns. She looks completely unharmed, pristine, however, she could not speak. Kinu says that she'll never let her hand go again. Lord Kayube immediately sent one of the servants out to get a doctor. He immediately grabbed his supplies and examined her. He noticed that there wasn't a scratch on her. He was dumbfounded as to how she'd spent a whole month in the mountains in winter and was unharmed. One month later, Dr. Shimamura noticed that whenever someone tried to talk to Ayano, she would only glance at them. But when Kinu is next to her, she's happy. He notices that she drinks water like she's about to die of dehydration, but she hasn't eaten or slept since she came back. She hasn't even had to use the bathroom. Three months later, after she'd been in the dark, Lord Kayube opened the doors, but the sunlight seemed to burn her skin. However, months later, she had grown thinner, but much taller, and her limbs were starting to grow longer. She healed in a matter of days, no matter what injury. 
But the doctor started to grow worried about the way Ayano looked at him, like he was her prey. Then one day, Ayano attacked, killed, and ate one of the servants. The doctor was done. He said goodbye to his friend and left. His one last act for Lord Kayube was to forge Ayano's death certificate, and then they used the body of the servant, making out it was that of Ayano's. The missing servant's poster would then show up in the village. They then confined Ayano to the dungeon so that she could never escape. When it came to Saichi, the whole time Ayano had been back, he hadn't been allowed to see her. Lord Koyube says that she is unwell. Then, one day, he was summoned by Lord Koyube. He told Saichi that if he wishes to see Ayano, then he needs to marry Kinu. He immediately accepted, as he wanted to be with Ayano. Then, he saw her. She was almost unrecognisable, no longer human. He noted that he was horrified with what Kinu was doing. She was sat next to what used to be Ayano, and she was smiling blissfully. After Ayano's return and with Ayano mutating before his eyes, her eyes have turned blood red. During his search for a cure, he'd found something called Princess Possession. It's a condition that turns women into monsters. If a certain cocoon is used, then the transformation can be reversed. So, Lord Koyube dedicated his search to finding this cocoon. And he found it. It glowed red, and he likened it to a portal to hell. He says that if Ayano drinks it, she will regain her human form. But Lord Koyube states that the cocoon is a secret medicine that severs the cycle of reincarnation for those who ingest it, rendering their soul like a hollow cocoon. Lord Koyube saw how she acts towards Kinu, though she calls out Kinu's name. Proof that she is still human. He wrestles with the choice of giving Ayano the cocoon. If he does, then nothing will be left of her old self. He decides that he wants Ayano to live, and he decides there's nothing more he can do. Three years later, Ayano's features had drastically changed. Her left eye was now punctured, and many eyes had taken its place, much like those of an insect. Silkworm markings had also taken form on her back. Then, three years after that, it turned out that Ayano was pregnant. She had been pregnant for six years. Two years later, Lord Kuyubi had gone missing. The doctor, along with Kinu, who was helping him, decided to extract the child from Ayano's stomach. The doctor feared for what the child would look like. It's revealed that the baby born from Ayano's body was that of Yui, Minato's mother. Saichi decided to protect her from this horror, and he would leave the Minato mansion. So, years pass, all the way up until 1952. Saichi found Yui crying in her room. Her face and school uniform were covered in blood. She was holding her canary, a gift from Saichi on her 13th birthday. She'd killed it because she was thirsty, and she drank its blood. He told Yui that her bloodlust came from him, that it was inherited, but he'd lied. He would even go as far as to drink blood with Yui to keep her from learning the real truth. Many more years later, after Yui got married, Saichi returned to the Miyama family. Kinu didn't really say anything when he returned. He still thought of Ayanu regularly. Two years later, he writes that Kinu cares for Ayano every day, but Saichi is not allowed anywhere near her. He's only allowed to watch them from outside her cell. He learned of Lord Kuyubi's research about the cocoon, he thought that he could find this cocoon and use it to reclaim Ayano. But Kinu was plotting. Saichi had, of course, found a way to cure Ayano. She resents Saichi. He found Ayano ugly in her mutated form and fled with Yui when she was a newborn. Kinu says that she never saw Ayano as ugly. In her mind, Saichi just wants to cure Ayano so that he can separate her and Ayano. So she threw her hairpin that he'd gifted her all those years ago into the well and asked Saichi to retrieve it. And he tried, but then Kinu pushed Saichi into the well, killing him. Then, Kinu didn't even inform Yui about her father's death. That's when Yui wrote a letter to Kinu, the letter that Minato found in the mansion. She was going to confront her, as they had a lot to discuss. From reading Yui's journal dated the 23rd of September, Yui died after she went to see Kinu. Kinu told Yui of her true origin, that she was in fact Ayano's daughter and not her own. Kinu couldn't stand Yui for the stupid reason that she reminded her so much of the sister she'd abandoned and left on the mountain to die. She explained Saichi's lie, that it was his bloodlust and that she'd inherited it from him. She'd actually inherited it from Ayano. She showed Yui her real mother, an abomination. Yui would later step in front of a train that very same day. Yui was the daughter of a monster, so you know what that means. Minato is the same. It's why he's always thirsty, and Kinu isn't his grandmother, Ayano is. And this is also why the red talismans glow when Minato walks near them. He has a demonic presence in him. It's a sign that a demon is near. 
These talismans also work to blast away and repel a strong demonic presence. But back to the present day. Miniato spots a single talisman sticking out of the wall, and another hidden door is revealed. He walks down a path which is covered in talismans, and he eventually comes to a cell. It's Sayano's cell. He finds another journal belonging to and written by Ayano. In it, she states that Kinu abandoned her, that she hates her, and that she loves Saichi. Then Ayano speaks of she, that she is too pure, that she hugs her when she cries, that she shoots threads and they form a cocoon together, that in the cocoon they dissolve and merge together as one. Her memories will replace Ayano's, and that she keeps eating her. She gets thirsty and needs blood. She writes that an old man stands outside her cell. She is forgetting who she really is. The old man entered the cell. Kinu laughed and said, Bon appétit. Ayano then, presumably ate the man. The man was her father, Lord Koyube. She thinks of Kinu as precious. She finishes off by stating that she has almost eaten all of her. Near the cell, a white talisman sits there and doesn't seem to harm Minato. He enters the cell and sees a noose. He also finds another journal. It's Kinu's will. She confessed that she'd poisoned blood that she'd given to Ayano. She did this because she would soon die from the cancer. And she also had the realization that once she's gone, no one will be able to care for Ayano. As the doctor stated, she will soon lose her memories. She tied the noose and her plan was to delete herself from existence. She explains her hatred for her sister was born out of her envy of her. She admits at the end of her journal that she has no idea who the she that Ayano writes about actually is. And like clockwork, Ayano shows up. A fight ensues, and after Ayano destroys two hooks holding the rocks in place, a massive boulder crushes her. So as Ayano looks up at her grandson, still saying Kinu's name, Minato has two options. The first is to grab a rock and smack Ayano over the head with it, killing her. A year later, Minato visits the family grave and lays some flowers. He tells Kinu that he will never forgive her. Nonetheless, Minato hasn't told anyone about Ayano, not even his father. He tells her that Ayano tried to save her even after she had poisoned her. She tried to take Kino down from the noose and she carried her to the entrance of the house. He says that he killed her, or so he thought, as Ayano has disappeared. He reveals that he couldn't just leave her corpse there, so he went back there to bury her properly. She was gone. In her place was a cocoon, with a hole in it and large numbers of white silkworms everywhere. Minato says that he won't be back and says goodbye. He turns around and he sees her there in the distance, the result of the cycle of reincarnation. He decides that no matter the thirst and the blood that runs through his veins, he will live as a human. Now on the flip side, Minato can decide to let Ayano live, since it makes no difference anyway. He cries out to his grandmother and he drops the rock. Minato calls his father and tells him that he's dropping out of college and that he's inheriting Kinu's house. His father is heartbroken as you'd imagine. Minato says that that's where he belongs. He reveals that they're cancelling the dam's construction, so he's able to live there. He tells his father that he'll never understand as he's a human. He tells his father to forget about him and not to call him again. Turns out that Minato will look after and care for and feed Ayano. The clock chimes and it's time for dinner. He approaches Ayano's cell and feeds her a bucket of blood and he tells her that he'll be with her forever. Now, remember I mentioned that Lord Kayube and Saichi found out about a cure? On the second run of the game, if you won enough points on the coin games, you could buy items from the shop in the menu. One of these items was a special key for a room on the upper floors of the Miyama Mansion called the Butterfly Room. Inside the Butterfly Room was the red cocoon that Lord Kayube found. After the fight with Ayano, after grabbing the cocoon, as well as the choices to kill or spare her, Minato has the option to feed her the cocoon. Later on, Minato visits his now youthful-looking grandmother in her room. She has emerged from her cocoon, and the reincarnation cycle has been severed. Or so he thinks. He approaches Ayano and she smiles at him, but this is short-lived. After he tells her she looks like his mother, Ayano's eyes turn red, and she attacks Minato. This ending gives way to the theory that Ayano would reincarnate multiple times over the decades, and that is where all the silkworms would come from. That Kinu would use them in order to grow the family's silkworm business. Because those silkworms were from her sister, she nurtured them and cared greatly for them. Now this ending is a bit of fun, it's more of an easter egg, although it does give birth to an interesting theory. It turns out that our protagonist is a bit of a UFO and conspiracy nut. In the in-game shop, you can buy a tinfoil hat. 
When Minato first enters the house, he finds a poster, and he exclaims that UFOs are real. He then turns on the TV and an advert is showing for Occult Monthly, a magazine that Minato says he studies with his group at college. Well, later on in one of the bathrooms, Minato finds a copy of the magazine. Anyway, in one of the closets, Minato can find a hatch with a tinfoil hat painted on it. If he's wearing his tinfoil hat, he can go through the hatch, and he enters a large courtyard area, and there's a crop circle. Minato looks up and sees a UFO above him, which lifts him up into it. He gets abducted by aliens. He looks down and Ayano is standing there waving at him, wearing her very own tinfoil hat. A very cool ending which did give me a good laugh. Other cool things when going for this ending are that at certain times the UFO will fly ahead, even dropping Ayano off as well. Going back to the episode of Occult Monthly, the first page says that a scroll featuring a UFO was found in a house in the village. The scroll depicted a mysterious and captivating woman. The scroll recounted an incident where a mulberry boat drifted ashore. The writers of the magazine suggest that the mulberry boat could have been a UFO and that the woman could have been an alien. It's certainly possible that when Ayana went into the mountains she was possessed by an alien rather than a demon or maybe even a demonic alien. Let me know what you think in the comments. And finally, another cool little easter egg ending is one based upon a Japanese urban legend. When starting the game for the second time, a pink piece of paper with a number on it can be found on the side of a house. When getting to the house, if the number is dialed, someone answers the phone and says, Hi, I'm Mary, I'm by the dumpster. The phone will ring four more times, with Mary getting closer and closer, until she rings and says that she's behind Minato. The game then ends with a game over screen. Throughout the game, Minato will then see a doll's head in certain toilets. And that's it, a pretty awesome horror game, not too long at around two hours in length, so if you've got a capable PC, I'd recommend checking it out for yourselves. I guess the only mystery in this game was what exactly happened to Ayano in the mountains. Again, let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to support. But for now, take care, and I will see you in the next one.